us here are gathered here today because we feel and we strongly believe that we can change the healthcare system for better. We can positively effect a change that is going to impact people outside this room and our, our generations unborn. But a great man, I think it was Albert Einstein, once said, you cannot solve the problems of today with the same thinking that created those problems. We need to elevate our thinking. We need to come at our problems in a different way. We cannot keep doing the same things and expect that miraculously down the road something is going to change. <coughs> I'd like to give you some examples from around the world of companies who made little changes. Now, don't focus on the companies, focus on the ideas behind what they did. Now, the story of Netflix, that is Netflix, by the way, it's one of the most preeminent video streaming companies that everybody knows or uses. Now, the story cannot be told without telling the story of Blockbuster. See, in 2002, Blockbuster was one of the biggest video rental companies in the US, doing about $6 billion in revenue. Netflix was a small company that did video rental by mail. Netflix was about to go under. They went to beg Blockbuster to buy them out for $50 million. And Blockbuster was like, nah, we're not gonna buy you. But the interesting thing about Blockbuster was that a lot of their clients had long waiting lines, poor client satisfaction. Does that remind anybody of anything in Nigeria? <laughs> and what happened was that Netflix went back to the table and was like, listen, if we don't innovate, we're gonna die. What did they do? They took advantage of the just coming online of the online um, streaming platform. They ignored the fact that YouTube was already there and went in and decided to keep plugging at it. They went on and on. Everybody kept telling them they were going to fail. There was no need to compete with Blockbuster. Fast forward six years, Blockbuster sold for bankruptcy. Netflix worked 2.2 billion in revenues a year. Now, the, the, these stories are not put out there for us to compare and say we want to be Netflix, but to show the scale of what you can do when you set your mind to doing something and thinking different. This guy, Carl Benz, invented the, automa auto the, the, the gas cylinder engine. What is interesting is that the invention was in, is in, was in his garage for about eight years. He was, because of regulation, because of the fact that nobody wanted this innovation to be used. And his wife decided one day that she was going to take the engine and drive it. And she drove it 200 kilometers. The women in the house, please give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> drove the car for 200 kilometers. And that kick started the automobile industry as we know it today. Now, I'd like to give you an example of a company that refused to innovate. These guys, these jokers. How many of you know Kodak? <laughs> Okay, I can see that people that don't have white beards didn't raise their hands. But Kodak used to be what we call, you know how you say, I want to have a selfie? That's what you would say, I want a Kodak moment. Now, the reason why I say these guys are jokers is because they invented the technology that kicked them out of the market. They invented film photography first and then invented digital photography. But then decided, no, we're going to stick with film photography. And Sony came took the technology, used it, and kicked them out of the market in a space of 10 years. The interesting thing is that Kodak had a research that said, in 10 years, this technology will be eminent. But the management said, nah, it's too disruptive. <laughs> now, I'd like to bring this back home. In Nigeria today, we have similar challenges. The point is, how are we going to approach it? Are we going to approach it like Kodak? Or are we going to come at it with a Netflix type of thinking? We have infrastructure challenges, financial constraints, human resource challenges. However, we keep trying to do what? Graduate more medical students, graduate more pharmacy students, throw more money at the wrong things, build more facilities. While what patients want, and not all these things, patients just want to feel good. An interesting statistic for you to consider. If we double the number of pharmacists in Nigeria, it would take 80 years 
for us to meet the WHO requirements. If we double the number of pharmacists we're graduating. So what that means is that if we continue doing the same thing we're doing, maybe in 80 years we would have solved our pharmaceutical issues in Nigeria. Now, I had a list of companies I wanted to speak to who we partnered to do work, but I'll go straight to what we do. Drug stock. How many of you here have gone to purchase a drug and wondered if it was fake or not? Sizable number. Lots of clients. Um, <laughs> see, that is what Drugstock does. When we started Drugstock, I was managing a chain of facilities, and I didn't know the drugs we were buying. I didn't know where the hell they were coming from. The way we told drugs that were fake or not was by looking at the packet, and we're like, okay, this one is wrinkled. This one is not wrinkled. So this one must be fake. This one, they spent money on the packet, so it must be real. And that was how we decided what was fake and what was not. Fast forward today, what are we doing? We started working with Excel sheets, first of all, to even control prescription patterns and understand what and how things were being sold. What Drugstop does today is that we are an IT and logistics platform that connects patients to the right drugs from the right place at the right time. We give cost-effective logistic solutions for healthcare companies, healthcare providers. We partner with companies, and in the last year, the companies we partnered with saved upwards of 30% in purchasing for drugs. Um, initially, we used to use that as a sales strategy, but what we realized was that when we tell people that we save 30%, um, they want the 30% savings from day one. So um, now we just tell you that we share the profits with you. And uh, yeah. So what am, I, what am I trying to get at? See, if we don't innovate, if we, if, if we think that we still have time, it's not a choice. These problems are here with us today. We don't have tomorrow to deal with them. There might be no healthcare system tomorrow. Mm -hmm. As a recap, or finally, I'd like to say that currently, we still have a problem with logistics and healthcare. God forbid if somebody walked out of this building and got knocked down, I'm not sure you would get that your story would be different if you needed ambulatory services from my dad 10 odd years ago. The resources, the energy, the motivation that is needed to change this story is right here in this room. And we can all be part of that change. Ladies and gentlemen, I have another confession to make. I'd like to go back to clinical practice. But first of all, I would love to solve the logistic challenges with getting pharmaceuticals to patients at the right time, the right place, and at the right cost. Please help me make that possible. Thank you very much.